within about 30 minutes of us making that phone call, the whole of the area where we were was infested with Stasi vehicles. So it was clear to us that the phones were all tapped uh, to the British Embassy. I used to be part of a military intelligence gathering unit working in the former East Germany. So Bricksmiths, or the British uh, Commander-in-Chief's military mission, uh, was an organisation brought to, to be into being at the end of the Second World War when uh, the Soviets and the Americans, the British and the French, decided to partition Germany as occupying forces. We were there to pass messages between uh, the Soviets and the West. However, that was the overt role of the mission. Um, the covert role of the mission was to gather as much intelligence as possible. What was your role in operation? I was the tour NCO at the times, and my job was to map read, get us to where we needed to go, um, and then report using a, a dictaphone everything that I saw, um, and also in the tour officer who sat in the back, and his job was to take all the photography. It wasn't uncommon for one of our vehicles um, to be followed by up to 10 um, secret police vehicles. One of the operations we did, which was at the time was, was a very secretive operation, was uh, one called Operation Tomahawk, which was the systematic scavenging of Soviet rubbish dumps. Um, and most of these dumps were quite close to their barracks, where, they, where all the troops were. And so we had to carry out this activity in the dead of night, historically between about two and four o'clock in the morning. It certainly got the heart going because you had to leave the vehicle about two to three hundred metres away from it and then walk in. Imagine, you know, a 40 to 50 foot high wall of rubbish. I mean, everything from garden waste to toilet disposal. The other thing that, that really got the blood going was the fact that these rubbish dumps were also occupied by every piece of vermin that you could think of. They were alive with rats. And I always remember once looking with my infrared goggles across a rubbish dump and it was like heaving. You know, packs of wild dogs as well, which were all rabid, used to roam on these, on these sites. And, and some of the dumps that we looked at as well, of course, were behind military hospitals. You know, if they cut off a limb, you know, an arm or a leg or something like that, they would throw it over the barrack wall into the rubbish dump. For some reason known only to the Soviets, they didn't really use toilet paper, and so therefore they would wipe themselves on letters from home, uh, documents, anything. I mean, it was just incredible to us, but very natural to them. And luckily for us, they would then throw that over onto the rubbish dumps, and we would just spend two to three hours buried in the rubbish selecting bits of paper. Again, other words we learned were secret in Russian and things. So you could pick a document up and see whether it was confidential or doc whatever, and then gather it, put it into your sack, which was an East German sack, so that again, if we had to discard it, um, nobody ever knew that it was you was there. A new tank had been introduced in the 80s uh, into East Germany called the T-80 tank, and we had no idea what the inside of it looked like. And luckily, one night, one of our guys found like wall charts which showed the entire mechanism where possible and whenever possible, we would steal stuff. I just saw this soldier who was asleep by a tree and his pack was, was next to him. And, uh, and again, we always wanted to know these detailed things like, what did the Soviet soldier, how did they operate? How did they compare to our soldiers in the West? So it just seemed to me that if I took his rucksack, apart from feeling about a second's worth of sorry for him because it was cold and I knew he wouldn't have anything, so I, I crept out of the vehicle, grabbed it. You know, what we learned very quickly or confirmed was just how much emphasis they put on their nuclear, biological and chemical warfare kit, his complete oversuit and his respirator and his uh, canister. And, and apart from that, virtually nothing. All minute bits of intelligence, which when you put it together in a jigsaw, gave our intelligence community the picture of what we were facing. 
Can you tell us about the time you felt most in danger? There was a particular occasion when, when I was out on tour and um, again, another high intelligence collection priority was um, this particular Soviet vehicle because this vehicle's job was to come to the banks of the River Elbe or one of the, for river crossings and it would literally drive off the bank into the, into the river underwater and survey the, and survey the, um, uh, the riverbed so that their tanks could come up, fit their snorkel devices and then drive across the riverbeds. Uh, and we heard it going around on driver training in this wooded area. So me and the tour officer got out the vehicle. We left the vehicle where we thought hidden and, and went across about 100 or so metres from the vehicle uh, into a little clump of bushes uh, to get close-up photography of this, of this bit of vehicle going around doing driver training. Unfortunately for us, the Stasi knew, knew we were in this area and the Soviets were alerted, the troops that were doing the driver training, and one of their vehicles saw our vehicle and, and basically rushed it to try and block it in. Our driver, thinking on his feet, in order to not show them where we were because we were out of the vehicle, he drove the vehicle off at high speed, therefore taking them all away with them and, uh, and left us two uh, sitting in the, in the bush. This was it in snowy conditions, it was deep snow on the ground. We had no communications on the vehicle whatsoever. So we went to a local village. Uh, by this time it was dark, about nine o'clock in the evening. And we, we went to this guest house, knocked on the door, and a little <laughs> opened it, looked at us. Uh, and it was the pub landlord. And, and very kindly, he took pity on us. He let us into the pub. We were able to make a phone call to the British Embassy in Berlin. Um, within about 30 minutes of us making that phone call, the whole of the area where we were was infested with Stasi vehicles. So it was clear to us that the phones were all tapped uh, to the British Embassy. We knew the penalties that the pub landlord would have to pay, so we had a quick drink with him, left his establishment and went and hid in a bus shelter on the edge of the village. And we were on, we were on the run on our own for about 12 hours. What would you say are some common misconceptions about working in espionage? <laughs> Always being surrounded by gorgeous women and, and offers to take you to bed. You know, that, that never happened. And, and the idea that it's a very glamorous, you know, scavenging on rubbish dumps was not a, uh, a very pleasant experience, to say the least. Do you miss it? Like everything in life, yeah. Could we turn the clock back? Would, would I... Would I go back and do anything different? No, I wouldn't change anything. You know, I had 32 good years in the, in the military where you know you're doing something against your enemy and getting away with it uh, was, uh, was tremendously rewarding. But I guess, I guess the thing looking back now is that, of course everybody knew where they were in life. You know, we knew where the enemy was and we knew where we were and we all had that understanding. You know, nowadays, of course, we don't know where the enemy is, they're all around us, you know, and, um, and so this asymmetric warfare type scenario now, where there is no front line, it can be around you, behind you, I think now it's, it's a lot more dangerous than, than it was back then. My next bit of kit, not necessarily going to be that obvious, but it's a phone. I had a, a very well-known Hollywood celebrity that was single, so it was very handy to give him one of these with a pay-as-you-go SIM, uh, which made his life a lot easier if he was giving out his numbers to new friends. 